Imagine walking into a movie theater. The lights are dim. The music swells. A story is about to begin. You lean forward, curious, excited, because you know something wonderful is about to unfold. Now imagine instead walking into a math class. The lights are bright. The room is quiet. No opening scene. No mystery. For some students, it's like being dropped into the middle of a movie. They have never seen. No context. No characters. No story. And then we wonder why students feel lost or bored. But here is the truth. Math too is a story. Every story starts somewhere. When a child learns to count, one, two, three, four, that's the opening scene. In every story, there is a hero. And the hero faces challenges, dragons, storms, doubts. In math class, the hero is the student. Self-doubt is the villain. Many students believe, I'm not a math person. I'm not good at it. So I flip the script in my classroom. I tell them, your struggles are not your identity. They are part of your plot development. We normalize mistakes and celebrate attempts. We reward thinking. Even if it doesn't lead to the right answer, how do most students experience math generally? As a disconnected list of topics. Fractions, integers, equations, probability. No story arc, no connection, but real learning has continuity. Every idea unlocks the next chapter. The story of math unfolds over years, not in minutes or hours like a Hollywood movie. Think about it. The story begins when a child learns to count. That's the opening scene, as I said. From there, the sequels keep coming in. Each chapter is meant to build on the one before. But here is the problem. The story keeps getting interrupted. Every year, and often several times within a year, students' learning journeys are paused by summer breaks, holidays, long weekends, exams, teacher changes, or curriculum. Let me give you a few examples. In fifth grade, a student finally masters fractions, adding, comparing, finding, equivalence, and all. Then comes summer. The school ends. Two months later, they are in sixth grade, facing ratios and proportions. But fractions feel like a movie they watched last year and barely remember the plot. The result? Confusion, frustration. I hate math. It's not because ratios are hard but because the link to fractions was lost. Fast forward to high school. At the end of 10th grade, students learn to factor quadratics. They finally get it. Again, the summer arrives. Three months later, in Algebra 2 and a new grade, the teacher writes on the board, find the zeros of this quadratic equation. And the students stare at the board. Zeros, roots, solutions. Wait, did we do this before? But now, they have forgotten half of the thing. So it is not that they can't learn. They just lost the storyline. Some students change school mid-year. The pacing is different. The units don't align. And suddenly they have missed chapter seven, linear equations. Now, when they reach chapter nine functions, they have no idea what's going on. It's not the student's fault. It's the interruptions, the breaks, the transitions, the missing link, the unskilled teaching that make math feel like a series of episodes instead of a continuous story. That's why purposeful review isn't option. It is the flashback that brings the story back. When we pause to review factoring before teaching functions, we are not slowing down. We are reconnecting the plot. Because students aren't confused by new concepts. They are confused by disconnected concepts. Mathematics isn't a chain of isolated islands. It is one vast interwoven world. Picture this. A student walks into a movie halfway through. The heroes are fighting dragons, but they don't know why. That's what happens when a student joins math midstream. They changed school. They had a rushed class. Or maybe the story wasn't told well. Now we expect them to graph a quadratic when they never understood how X and Y are related. We tell them, pay attention. But they are thinking, who are these characters? What's happening here? Why are we even here? It's not the student's fault. 
the story only becomes engaging when the missing links and missing chapters are restored. Those missing chapters might be fractions, percentages, or roots, or anything. Our job isn't to teach the next chapter. Our job is to repair the storyline. Then only the students can rejoin the adventure. Students must see math alive in their world. It shouldn't be like, here is trigonometry. But it should be like, how can we measure the height of that tall tree without climbing on it? We go outside, use a climometer app to measure the angle of elevation, measure our distance from the tree, and boom, using tangent equals height over distance, we find the tree's height. Now, sine, cosine, tangent become useful tools, not memorized formulas. Math finally matters. It's not just on the boat, it's in their hands, which they can apply. In the best movies, the audience leans forward, eager to see what happens next. That's our role as teachers, to direct curiosity. Traditional math says, here is the rule, now do 20 problems. Great math teaching says, what do you notice? What do you wonder? Why do this thing always work? Even wrong answers are progress. They build reasoning and resilience. We are not teaching answers. We are teaching how to think. A whiteboard alone cannot tell the story of math. So I bring it to life with props, dice, cards, coins, ropes, shapes. When I teach circumference, I don't start with C equals pi times D. I hand them a rope. They make a circle and I ask them to measure the curve, the circumference with straight ruler. It's tricky. Then we measure straight across the circle, the diameter, multiply with pi, and we get the circumference. We match with the length of the rope. Suddenly pi isn't memorized. It is discovered. They find it hiding inside the circle. That's spark. That's aha moment. It is joy. We, the teachers, become storytellers with props. We are not just math teachers. We are screenwriters, producers, directors. We craft the narrative. We cast students as heroes. We use flashback to fill missing chapters. And we build belief in math and in students themselves. Because when math is told like the story it truly is, students show up, students engage, students care, and they stay for every chapter. Let's teach math like sequels of a movie. Students can't wait to watch the next one. Let's give them characters they relate to themselves, props they can touch, stories grounded in their world, challenges that make them stronger, a plot that always moves forward with flashbacks when needed. Because when math becomes a story worth telling, students don't just learn it, they live it. Thank you very much.